So was Elisha Cook speaking literally or metaphorically when he said that his beard could probe into men's souls? I tend to think he was being metaphorical, but maybe he just has a really perceptive beard. Another week and two more episodes of Bark Skins on National Geographic Channel. I have thoughts, but before I get into that and unpack what happened in these two episodes, if you're new to the channel, if you are interested in seeing my future reviews of the next episodes of Bark Skins or of other shows, I highly recommend subscribing so you don't miss a thing. So getting into these two episodes of Bark Skins with spoilers, you've been warned. I enjoyed these two episodes, particularly the second episode because there was a very, very bloody skirmish in that episode. It was a very exciting skirmish and everything that you would want in a frontier battle between Iroquois and French settlers. However, I felt like it was pretty dumb. It reminded me of Last of the Mohicans in that it was really, really brutal and well staged. There were tomahawks to the head. There was some pretty gory stuff. It was a bad day for the black robes, as one character so aptly stated. Uh, I felt like the way that they handled that was a little poor because I get that they were going for the humor of, oh, religious people always think that their God will protect them, and how dumb is that? Uh, but I feel like the priests would be a little bit more practical than that, would know that the Iroquois are going to kill them if they just walk down there. I mean, they've been torturing the other priests. Do we really think that the priests are this dumb? I don't know. Uh, and overall, the scene was just dumb because you watch Trepagny run past the fighting, the fight's still going on, and then he stops to untie Renee's cell from that tree. And I really was like, okay, this is dumb. Come on, dude, <laughs> what are you doing? But then after he gets knocked unconscious, the Native American character that they have along with them runs up and starts to untie Renee as well. And of course he gets an arrow to the throat. So two characters got incapacitated and killed trying to get Renee untied from that tree in the middle of a fight. It was really dumb. I don't think that people would do that in real life. I think they would wait until the fight was over to untie him and it was just dumb writing, but they had to untie Rene so he could kill an Indian with a knife and go chasing after the Iroquois leader who had been torturing him. And this was another dumb scene because he gets surrounded by Iroquois, but this new character, Gay Bill, is like, oh no, don't kill him. It's not what your father would do. Let them go. Let the French settlers go. We're going to kill them later, but don't worry about it for now. Just don't even worry about it. So this is symptomatic of something I've noticed in the show where a lot of times things happen not so much because they make sense, but because the writers want them to happen. Uh, Rene Sell is kind of the Jon Snow of Barkskin. Uh, he's just pretty good looking and seems kind of virtuous, but doesn't really seem to have a lot going on in the brains department. And, but he's protected by plot armor, so don't worry about him. He's safe to root for because he's, he's safe because he'll be fine. Even if he gets surrounded by Iroquois, he'll come out okay. But as I said, I did enjoy this episode. The fight scene was brutal. It was, it didn't really advance the plot, but it was just a nice little relief. And it hopefully bodes well for things to come as I think we're going to get a pretty, some pretty brutal episodes coming up. I think that the, everything so far is setting up the raid on the settlement by the Iroquois as soon as they get the pistols from Elisha Cook. And speaking of Elisha Cook, I already kind of mentioned his conversation with Charles Duque about beards. I'm enjoying this relationship a lot. I think they're probably either my favorite dynamic duo or my second favorite dynamic duo. I really like the way that the show is playing, playing, portraying Charles Duque. I don't think he's the best character. I think he's that, you know, that character who is kind of a weakling and you kind of don't really like him, but you like how shrewd he is and how he always manages to survive. And this week he found out, of course, that uh, 
Lafarge's boy who he didn't kill but who he sent off into the woods ended up dead anyways and of course Elisha Cook thinks that Duque killed Lafarge's son and you know just he thinks that he followed through on the orders he was given even though Duque knows that he didn't um, but I'm enjoying this dynamic I think it's interesting because you're seeing this funny balance where Cook is very Machiavellian in that he kind of seems like he would do anything to get what he wants, but at the same time, he values loyalty in Duque, and he's advising Duque to be loyal. I liked how they compared uh, how he said that, you know, we're hawks among rabbits, essentially, and it's it's interesting. I don't necessarily see that the two of them are equivalent. I also thought it was funny how the, the beard speech was funny. I couldn't believe what he was saying. I was like, this is such a funny speech. And I feel like the audience already kind of thinks of him as the guy with the big beard. So I don't know that as a writer, I would really want to draw attention to that. I might, you know, give him some other development, but it was a funny speech. Um, very campy, but funny. Uh, we got to see some scenes between Melisande and Marie. Melisande is obviously learning a bit more about her new husband, who she very pointedly told Mathilde that she has not taken his last name yet. And it's interesting. I don't really like this plot line. I think these two actresses deserve better. I think these two characters deserve better because in this life and death frontier situation to have these two women fighting over a man that they are both, you know kind of viewing as theirs. I get that it kind of shows how women were very, very dependent on men during this time in history, but I feel that when there's life and death stakes for all the other characters, it seems a little bit sexist to give these these two women this plot line, and it just doesn't really reflect well on either of them. I feel like Marie could do better, and interestingly, she says that she wants Melisande to tell Trepagne, she saw how he's going to die, so that's interesting. I wonder how the show is going to have it happen. It happens a certain way in the book, but we'll see how it happens in the show. Melisande had some scenes with Delphine. We finally found out from Delphine how she, why her husband wasn't willing to consummate their marriage. She has a scar on her abdomen that was left there by a woodcutter. I feel like this character that she apparently killed with the axe handle she beat him to death i feel like this character is probably renee sell's brother who died in the past i don't know why else they would have delphine talking about this character because really this isn't adding a lot to her backstory other than men did her wrong like and we kind of already knew that so it didn't really you know we didn't really need this long story unless it ties into a character that is already in the show so that's the only reason i can think of that they would have her give this explanation we came up with a lot of theories for why the husband wasn't willing to consummate the marriage but we were operating on incomplete information so you can't really blame us for not being able to figure this out there's just no way you could figure this out without knowing what the writers had planned i appreciated Mathilde this episode. I felt like they gave Marcia Gay Harden a lot more to do. We got to see her fierce protective side, but we also got to see her as this shrewd manipulator. I feel that Marcia Gay Harden is doing the worst fake French accent of any actor in this show. I feel like she's doing a great job portraying the character overall, and she's one of my favorite characters, possibly my favorite character in these two episodes. I felt like it was interesting to see her scenes where she's negotiating with Elisha Cook and how she's very much willing to let bygones be bygones, even with the fact that she strongly suspects that he had her husband killed by Lafarge. But there's no profit in it, as she says. She's very Machiavellian, as many of these characters are, in that sense that she's only looking out for her own interests. And you see that with the way that she treats Delphine, but you also see that she cares for people in her own kind of rough and exploitative way in the way that she's protecting uh, Renardine from Cook and saying she doesn't know anything, leave her alone, that's the deal she's going to make with Cook. Again, I felt like this scene kind of exemplified how the writers kind of have things happen because they want to have them happen because I think it would have been more realistic for her to kind of work to have Cook brought to justice for the crime she knows he's committed.
but they went a different direction because I think they want to keep both these characters in play. And I can understand that. They're both interesting enough characters, particularly Matilde. There wasn't nearly enough of Aniron, Barnard, and Zan McLarnan in these two episodes. I felt like these characters are the most interesting characters in the show, and we're not really getting to see a lot of them. I love the foil that they represent to each other, how you know, you've got this very civilized and educated, well, they're both educated, but you've got this very civilized and moral person in Amish Gomes, and then you've got this person who's a lot more practical and maybe sees the world the way it is and is cynical and honestly seems to be very brutal character in the character that Zahn McLarnan is playing. And it, the big twist biggest reveal this week was we learned about the rifles that Cook wants to turn it is supposed to turn over to the Iroquois and I think that's obviously setting up the massacre of this French settlement that's going to come in potentially the finale it's interesting because when you look at the characters if you split them down the middle between the English and the French characters it's like pretty evenly split I mean you've got Duquet, Cook, Hamish Gomes, Zahn McLarnan's character and I think there's some others with the English. And then on the other side, you've got, you know, everyone else. And that's going to be really interesting to see who survives and, you know, who's left standing after this happens. I've seen, you know, the trailers make it very obvious that's where this is headed. And if, even if you didn't have the trailers to go by, I think you'd be able to tell that was where this was going because it's, you've got this foreboding sense that the settlement is going to get, that Wobeck is going to get attacked and there's going to be a lot of bloodshed. Twist for this plot line is that his brother-in-law, Hamish Gomes' brother-in-law, is still alive and he's a little bit worse for the wear. He seems to have gone pretty crazy because of what he's been forced to do by the company. And you see Hamish Gomes struggling with this as he too has been given his walking orders and he's not entirely comfortable with it. And obviously we see Zahn McLaren's character who is basically willing to do whatever the company says. Again, he's a lot more cynical, a lot more practical. And I just, I like both these characters. I want more of them. And it was like 30 minutes into the first episode of the two episodes that was released before we even got to see them. And then it was only like a 30 second scene. So I would, could really do with more of these characters. I really appreciate them and wish they were in more of the show. I think that it, the, so far, the strengths of this show outweigh the weaknesses. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you're most looking forward to in the upcoming episodes. Let me know who your favorite characters are. And if you're interested in subscribing to this channel so you can see future videos as I upload them, I highly recommend you do that. And as always, you can watch more videos right now.